Okay, welcome to this review video that we have here. Um, this is going to be on inverse trig functions. Let me go back and reanimate the slide. So, we talked about inverses in class already. Now we want to apply it to the six trig functions that we have studied in pre-calc. A lot of this you've seen already in pre-calc, but I want to make sure we understand really what's going on. So that way, when we start taking derivatives of inverse trig functions, you can sort of see where they're coming from. So, let's just look at a trig function. I just put a graph here of sine x. And remember we talked about in class about getting inverses, you'd flip-flop the x and y coordinates, and if you were to graph this sine wave and take its inverse, this is what you'd get. It would be this wavy curve, almost looks like, like a slide, a curved S-shaped slide. Now, notice that graph is going to fail the vertical line test, so as is, it's not a function. So if you remember in pre-calc when you talked about inverse trig functions, you restricted the domain so that way the function would or the relation would be an actual function. So we're going to do that. We're going to use one little piece of the curve and we're going to use it from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. So we're only going to get answers when we take the inverse of sine somewhere in between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2 within our unit circle. The other um, domains, cosine inverse or arc cosine, we restrict from 0 to pi. And arctangent, we restrict from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, noticing, however, that that is an open interval because those are undefined negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 because, remember, on the original graph of just the tangent of x, that's where we have our vertical asymptotes. Okay? So let's do some problems. Let's get some... Uh, inverse values. Before we do, I think it's a good idea to review some special right triangles. There's a reason why in pre-calc you study the 30 degree, 45 degree, and 60 degree angles um, from the unit circle, pi over 6, pi over 4, and pi over 3 respectively. It's because you get those values from looking at the, th the two special right triangles that you did in geometry class. The 30, 60, 90, which have sides 1, 2, and root 3. And the 45, 45, 90, which have legs 1 and hypotenuse root 2. Okay? Not sure if you looked at that in pre-calc, but that is a way you can get all those unit circle values using right triangle trig and these two special right triangles. We're going to do a little bit of that here with these problems today. So first thing, let's look at the arc sine of negative 1 half. So we're thinking about the sine value or the angle, rather, whose sine value is negative one-half. All right, and we're going to look at it within that domain. So if you think a little bit about it, and you know your unit circle, and you look at your table that you have, you find out that that has to be negative pi over 6. Okay, let's look at the next one, a little bit easier. Cosine inverse of 0. Well, again, we don't want the angle 0. We want when does the x-coordinate 0 from 0 to pi and I believe that's going to happen right there on the y-axis, which has angle pi over 2. Now we'll do arctan of root 3. Okay, well, root 3 happens for tangent at pi over 3, so that's going to be that value. And one more, cosecant inverse of negative root 2. By the way, this would be the same thing as the arc sine of root 2 over 2, if you take the reciprocal of negative um, root 2, you get negative root 2 over 2. So I believe that'll be at negative pi over 4. Okay? Now that we've refreshed our memory about getting some values and working backwards, basically, from our unit circle, let's start using these a little bit more in depth. So here we go. We're asked to find the sine of arc tangent of 3 fourths. So anytime I do this and the directions tell you to do this, draw a picture. It comes in handy. So we'll draw our right triangle. And since we're going backwards from tangent, I know that for this angle theta, opposite side has to be 3 and adjacent has to be 4. Well, by the, looking at the figure, it's very easy to tell, but this is a 3, 4, 5 right triangle. So the sine has to be 3 fifths. Whoops, excuse me, let me go back. 
The sine has to be three-fifths, opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, let's look at another one. The tangent of arc cosine of root 2 over 2. Okay, so again, I'm going to draw my right triangle. I know cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so I'm going to make my adjacent side root 2, my hypotenuse 2, and then I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem to set up that relationship that's there, root 2 squared plus b squared equals 2 squared, and I'm going to solve for b. So I'll go through the algebra, b squared has to be 2, so b has to be root 2. So we'll put that in as our other leg, and then tangent is opposite over adjacent, root 2 over root 2, which is 1. By the way, this is a 45-45 angle, or 45-45 triangle, so if I asked you what theta was, you would tell me that it's pi over 4, or 45 degrees. But I'm not asking that here, but just something you should be thinking about as you're working through these problems and watching this video, trying to make those connections. Let's look at another one. Okay, the secant of sine inverse of one-third. All right, again, filling in my table in this, or my uh, triangle. In this case, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so I make my opposite side to theta 1 and my hypotenuse to 3, and this is a right triangle even though it doesn't look like it is. So we'll use our Pythagorean theorem. 9, that shouldn't be squared, equals 1 plus b squared. So that makes b squared 8 b would be root 8. So I'll stick root 8 in as my adjacent side. So secant is going to be the reciprocal of cosine. So we're going to do the hypotenuse over the adjacent, which will be 3 over root 8, which you can then simplify and rationalize to be 3 root 2 over 4. Okay? Last one with numbers. So the cotangent of cosine inverse negative two-fifths. Now notice I drew this triangle in a different position because since the cosine is negative, it's got to be in the second quadrant because remember if we go back to the domain of arc cosine, we're going somewhere, theta's got to be somewhere between zero and pi. And since it's a negative cosine value, that means it can't be in the first quadrant because cosine would be positive in the first quadrant. So I've got to stick that triangle on the second quadrant as drawn. So then that means my adjacent side will be negative 2. And my, hypo or my, yeah, my hypotenuse will be 5. So using the Pythagorean theorem, I get 5 squared, which is 25, equals a squared plus 4. Which means a has got to be the square root of 21. So I'll fill in that opposite side there. So cotangent, reciprocal of tangent. So we're doing adjacent over opposite. Adjacent is negative 2. Opposite is root 21. So I get negative 2 over root 21, which rationalizes to negative 2 root 21 over 21. Okay? You'll have some examples of that in the homework set that goes along with this, more numeric examples. Now I want to take things and abstract them a little bit. Because this is what's going to help us kind of cross the bridge to derivatives in our next class. Let's not use specific values. Let's talk about the cosine of sine inverse of just x. We're going to do everything the same, except we're not going to use too many numbers. So the sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite would be x. Hypotenuse, we'll call it 1, x over 1. So we'll draw our picture like we've been doing, but we're going to fill in the opposite side to theta as x and the hypotenuse as 1. Now, since I need cosine, I'm going to have to figure out what this adjacent side is. So I'm going to use my Pythagorean theorem again. a squared plus x squared equals 1 squared, or a squared plus x squared equals 1. I will solve for a squared first, and then take the square root. a is the square root of 1 minus x squared. So that's what I'm going to put in right there in that missing spot. Now that I have the, circle, or the triangle solved, I can figure out the cosine. Adjacent, 1 minus x squared, square root, over 1, or just the square root of 1 minus x squared. That expression is going to sound very familiar to you in Monday's class. Okay? Let's try another one. The tangent of cosine inverse of x. So again, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So my adjacent side will be x. My hypotenuse will be 1. I will work through the Pythagorean theorem. And I'll let you try that one on your own, but you'll get 1 minus root x squared. So tangent will be opposite, which is root 1 minus x squared, over adjacent, which is x. Okay? We'll do 
another one like this. Let's take it another step further. So sine of cos inverse of 2x. All right, I'm filling in the right triangle for you. At this point, you should see where this is coming from. This is just Sokotoa. If you need more review with right triangle trig, watch the summer assignment video as well this weekend. Okay? Cosine inverse of 2x means adjacent will be 2x. Hypotenuse will be 1. We will solve this triangle for the other side, the other leg. I get 2x squared plus b squared equals 1 squared. 4x squared plus b squared is 1, so b squared is 1 minus 4x squared, which means b is the square root of 1 minus 4x squared. Okay, so sine opposite over hypotenuse. The sine of the cosine inverse of 2x will be 1 minus 4x squared, root of all that. Okay? Last one. The sine of tan inverse 3x. Okay, we will put in our theta. Tangent of 3x means opposite will be 3x, adjacent will be 1. All right, I've got my a and my b here, so the Pythagorean theorem for this isn't so bad. You're just going to do uh, square them and then take the square root of the sum. So we get 1 plus 9x squared is c squared. So c is the square root of 1 plus 9x. So then when we do our sine, we will do opposite which is 3x, over hypotenuse, which is root 1 plus 9x. You can leave it like that. You could rationalize it. I think for something this complicated, maybe just leaving it like that is, will suffice for right now. Um, but that's really all there is to it. I have some more examples of all these different flavors of problems that we did, evaluating some basic inverse functions for trig, um, doing some of these composition uh, trig functions, an inverse on the inside, and a regular trig function on the outside. So give those a try. Any parts of the video that might have been unclear, you can always pause them, rewind them, rewatch any of them. Like I said in the video, um, this video also kind of correlates to some of the summer assignment videos. There were videos on inverses. There's videos on right triangle trig and some of the other trig videos. So if you need to brush up on any of that, please feel free to do so. Um, and I will see you back in class getting ready to start talking about how we're going to actually differentiate these inverse functions. All right. Thank you very much for watching.